Just looking at the latest rumors about the Sony ZV-E1, which is releasing in less than 24 hours, and if some of these are true, this camera is going to be insane. However, there's a few of these leaked features that are like, what the? A lot of people, for whatever reason, hate the menu system more than their mother-in-law on some of the older Sony cameras, including the Sony ZV-1 and even the more newer Sony ZV-E10. Apparently, the Sony ZV-E1, I know that's a lot of Sony ZV-E whatevers, but the new camera that's coming out in less than 24 hours will have a new menu system, which means it's probably going to migrate over to the more cinema line menu system, which you can find in stuff like the Sony FX3. A little bit more intuitive, still loads of screens, but it works really, really well. Now, something that might not work so well on the Sony ZV-E1 is this thing called dynamic stabilization. Now, I'm not sure what dynamic stabilization is exactly, but two things spring to mind. GoPro Hero 11 Black. It's got electronic stabilization, which means the stabilization on the GoPro is phenomenally good, as long as you're not in a dark or low light situation. And then the stabilization, which is all done with an algorithm, starts falling apart because the camera can't really see what it's supposed to be stabilizing. So that's one option on the Sony ZV-E1 for this dynamic stabilization. The other thing, and this could be a huge deal breaker if this could be true, and some of the rumors have been kind of pointing towards this, and that, my friends, is there is no stabilization in the camera whatsoever. What does that mean? You gotta stabilize it in post. What does that mean? A slower workflow. What does that mean? Uh, anyway, you get the drift, right? Now, with a lot of the newer Sony cameras, you can actually stabilize in post quite well because the camera records all the kind of important gyroscopic data and then in post you can just get a really good stable shot. However, Sony may be asking you to do this through Sony Catalyst Browse, which is free, but you have to do one clip at a time and it takes forever, it's not the fastest. Or if you pay them some money, they will allow you to do in batches. Either way, I think this could be a huge deal breaker, especially if you're a vlogger and you just want to run and gun and get your video up and done. And after all, this is vlogging to your full potential because as we know by now, and it has to be true, the Sony ZV-E1 is going to be a full frame camera. But there is something I've spotted which I can't get my head around whatsoever. And this is from Sony Alpha Rumors. I'm sure some of you are going, nah, yeah, anyway. It's called cinematic mode. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, cinematic mode, it's going to be amazing. Which it's not because from what Sony Alpha Rumors are saying, the cinematic mode is going to have black bars. Which as we all know, cinema, nothing is cinematic unless it has black bars. Please Sony, no. Why would you have a mode? Why would you re waste? I can't even speak. Why would you waste? Good man. Why would you re oh, screw it up? Why would you waste engineers on getting this kind of option into a camera if this is to be true? Cinematic mode, black bars. I think that's a bit of a red herring, to be honest. Something else, though, that could be an even bigger red herring is a touch screen record button. You just touch the screen and records. Why? Okay, so it's got a new touchscreen by all accounts with a swipe up feature. Whoa, where are we living in 2012? Anyway, so that's something else that might be a bit like, what's the point in that? Which is fine. Now, something else though that there is a huge point to, and this is one of the features that the Sony ZV-E1 absolutely needs to have because it will save all of us so, so much trouble. And that is something that's called a tally light. Now, you might be going, Vic, what's a tally light? Let me put it like this. A tally light will make sure that you record every single thing that you want to record. VHs, things, things, I know, I know, don't leave a comment. Basically, it's a big red light in front of the camera, so you're like, oh, I'm recording. And I'm sure it'll have that nice little red border on the screen that a lot of the newer Sony cameras have as well. So that's a good thing. Now, here's the other really super, super important point. If you are thinking about changing the camera and maybe getting this new Sony ZV-E1, which to be fair is not the world's best kept secret. This battery, if this is in the Sony ZV-E1, which if it's a similar size to the Sony ZV-E10, it's a little possibility. This is the Sony NPF W50, FW50 battery. It's fine but for a camera that's full frame, that's gonna do 4K 60, that's potentially going to do 4K 120, this thing, what it does need though is this. 
This is the Z1000 battery. This is in some of the more higher end Sony cameras like the Sony FX3 and it's also in the old faithful of the Sony A6600. These batteries, if this is in it and apparently somebody that's testing the Sony ZV-E1 that reported to Sony Alpha Rumor saying it does have the Z1000 battery in it. These batteries will go forever. So the one thing that you can be kind of sure of, even if you have one of these or two of these, regardless of what you're doing, you know that you're not going to be running out of...